What's up, what's up, what's up? All my one sexy wives, you know what day it is. It is Tuesday, and you know what goes down here on Tuesday. Wife chat goes down here on Tuesday. And I just want to tell you guys, you know, I get so excited when Tuesday pops off on here on Facebook. And so do me a favor. I know you're getting yourself ready and you're joining, but make sure that you're hitting the share button. Make sure that you're letting my all my One Sexy Wives know that wife chat is going down here on Tuesday. And I just want to say thank you guys so much for hopping on. Thank you so much for all sharing. And I just want to say last week was amazing. If you did not get a chance to hop on wife chat, I had the uh, pleasure of interviewing my very first person here on wife chat. Usually I do stuff on my wife master classes, but I had Pastor Keith Battle uh, last week and we talked about the side chick. We talked about infidelity and it was an amazing, amazing wife chat. So I thank you guys so much for sharing. I thank you guys so much for hopping on. I thank you guys so many, so much for all your comments. I'm still getting comments. I'm still getting questions about my life after infidelity program. And so, um, if you want to know more about that, please hit me up. But again, thank you guys so much for supporting Wife Chat. And so today, I'm super excited about the topic that we're going to talk about. How to not hit below the belt when you have an argument with your spouse. Now, as you guys know, communication is huge in any marriage. And this particular topic came from an amazing woman all the way from Wisconsin, all the way from Wisconsin. And I had the pleasure of speaking with her and she was just talking about how do I not go from zero to a hundred and hit below the belt, especially when I feel as if my spouse is not allowing me to um, really express everything that I have and everything that I want to say. And she was talking about how for years she, you know, just was very quiet and, and that he literally took advantage of her. And now that, you know, she's been watching some of the, the wife master classes and some of the wife chats and, you know, just really working on herself that she's beginning to find her voice in her marriage. And so she was like, you know, now I think I'm out of control now. Right. And we all have been there. And so, um, again, I'm going to talk to you about um, how to have an argument and not go below the belt. And sometimes that's very hard. Sometimes it's, it's, it's some, something that, you know, it's like, oh, I got to go in for the kill before he goes in for the kill. And I get that. But let me just tell you, communication in a marriage is so important, effective communication in a marriage is so important. So again, thank you guys so much for getting on here. Make sure that you put your comments in, in the chat. Make sure you let me know that you're on here. Um, I, I'm super excited. You, you guys know I love to be able to pour into you guys. Um, so let me just give you a few things before. If you have a question or you want to make a comment, please put it in the chat. And if I'm not able to, you know, answer or go, I always go back on here and always, always, always either like, comment, or answer any questions that you have. So thank you so much for, for joining me, Lisa. I, I know you got a beautiful new grandbaby. Congratulations. Um, but anyway, um, just make sure that you um or are putting your comments in the chat. Um, again, um, I'm doing my last uh, masterclass for the spring um, on Thursday at 8.30 Eastern Standard Time, but that's being held in my One Sexy Wife Club. So if you're not a part of my private group here uh, on Facebook, please just go in there um, ask to join and we will make sure you become a member. But um, again, I want to thank um, the young lady from Wisconsin for tonight's chat. We're going to really be talking about how not to hit below the belt. And again, like I said, communication in a marriage sometimes can be so difficult, especially if you have a dominant Per, you know, somebody who has a dominant personality that doesn't allow you to get a word in, uh, doesn't allow you, doesn't listen very well, all of those things, just know 
that I understand. Um, so let's let's get into some tools and strategies, right? Um, because I'm very uh, much about giving you the tools and strategies that you need um, to the best of my ability to make sure that your marriage is working. And um, the first thing is before you get go from zero to a hundred. And this is something that I had to truly work on because it's so hard. It is very difficult, especially right when you are talker like I am. And especially when you, you know, are like, don't process you like it goes from here to here and you ain't trying to hold nothing back. The first thing I need for you to do is stop and pause. Stop and pause, right? And the technique I use because I can go from zero to 150 within a matter of seconds, right? Especially when I know I'm white, especially when I feel Gil is not listening, especially when we didn't probably went around this bush too many times for me. Like I have no patience, right? So you need to stop and pause because we're talking about how not to go below the belt, right? You need to stop and pause. And the technique that I use is I stop and I pause and I begin to talk, count to 10, right? And when I first started doing this technique, I used to count out loud because I needed to know when I hit 10, right? I you, you stop and pause and I just stop and I pause and I begin to count to 10 because that will bring me down from saying something or doing something that I'm gonna have to regret later. And in the once I finish counting to 10, I'm giving you some good tools and techniques. Then you have to ask yourself these questions. Is what I'm about to say, do I have to say it now? Right? Do I have to say what I'm about to say right now? Right? Is about what I'm about to say. Is, is it something that I would want said back to me, right? Because a lot of times we spew words, right? And we wouldn't tolerate our spouse saying them back to us. And then the third question you need to ask yourself is, um, what I'm about to say, is it going to cause me to have to say I'm sorry later, right? Because remember, your words have power. You can never take them back. You can say, I'm sorry. You can say all of those things, but you can never, ever, ever take them back. So strategy number one, stop and pause, count to 10, and ask yourself these three questions. If As what I'm about to say, do I have to say it now? Number two, is what I'm about to say, do I want it said back to me? And number three is what I'm about to say, am I going to have to apologize for later? I guarantee you, if you use this technique, it will take you from 150 all the way down. Now, is it going to take away the anger? Absolutely not. But I just learned when I had learned that particular technique that I just shared with you, I didn't have to say everything I wanted to say at that time. I didn't have to apologize as much as I used to, okay? Number two, ask questions instead of assuming or accusing. Because when you're in the heat of the moment, you begin just to assume and you begin to accuse. I don't care what you say, you begin to say, I know you so-and-so, so-and-so, and I know you so-and-so, so-and-so, and I know you so-and-so, so-and-so, and it might not even be the case. So ask questions. Because what always look like it appears to be something might not always be. Y'all know I'm talking good to you, right? I know that for a fact. So make sure you ask questions, don't assume, and don't accuse. Because that can get you in a lot of trouble 
and it can make things escalate and it can make things, uh, you know, go a different way when you just need to ask the simple questions. Honey, did you do so-and-so, so-and-so? Or is what I'm seeing correct? Or what? let me repeat what you said. Or let me um, go back. Did you do right? Those are better questions than I know. I and uh, accusing somebody of doing something, or saying something, or whatever, right? Because again, it could not always be what you think it is. So ask questions. Number three, and I'm so guilty of doing this. Don't over exaggerate the situation. Like I'm so over the top, right? I can make a little thing. You know, my mom used to say, "You can make a a, a molehill out of a mountain." Because I used to just like like I have a vivid imagination anyway, so I just over exaggerate everything, right? And 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 Gil's like, "Gee, it's not that serious." Yes, it is. And I just make it so extravagant, right? And just so I over the top. And you know, if 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 you you know if you didn't put gas in my car, it could have blew my engine up. And I just go over the top just about everything, right? So don't over exaggerate, because when you do that, you put your spouse in a defensive posture. It really you really do, because it it makes it seem like you're inflating things. And you are basically lying, right? So don't over exaggerate. Number four, and I know you've heard me say this before use I sentences instead of you sentences, right? Because that also puts your spouse in a very defensive posture. You make me sick. You, you know, you did that. You know, you knew, you knew, you, 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 you. No, it sounds better and it makes the person relax more when you say, well, I feel this. I know this. I, right? Instead of you. Because even if you're not pointing the finger, it comes across as if you are putting them in a defensive posture and you're making them feel like they have to defend themselves. Okay? Number five, practice common courtesy. This is your spouse. This ain't your boyfriend. This is your spouse. Practice common courtesy. And what do I mean by that? I know a lot of us curse. A lot of you good Christians still curse, right? And when you get to calling them out of their name, you get to uh you know doing crazy stuff like i used to do right and still can do right practice common courtesy because again this is your spouse don't do crazy and say th crazy things because you wouldn't do that to someone on the street why would you do that to someone that you said i do to and lay down in the bed with so practice common courtesy don't say or do anything you don't want done to you. And again, don't say or do anything that you're going to have to apologize for later. Because you can't control your emotions and your actions and how you behave. Number six, be open to a different perspective. And that's where listening comes in. You ain't always got to do all the talking. And you're not always right in the situation. You're not. Be open to at least listen to the other side of the story. And that's where I fail a lot. Because when I know that I'm right, I don't even listen to a different side. I don't even see it from a different perspective. I just know I'm right. And that's wrong. Right? Because a different perspective 
can open your eyes to seeing things a different way or things that you didn't even know was going on behind the scenes. What you always see up front might not always be what's going on in the background. So allow your spouse to at least show you and be open to a different perspective. Because you're not always right. You don't always know the full story. And if you continue not to be able to, to listen and your spouse thinks that you won't, you won't listen, he's not going to ever give you the full story. He's going to be shut down, right? And we talked about that a little bit last week with, with Pastor Battle, that sometimes we do too much talking. We don't do enough listening. So that's why the side chick becomes his sounding board because she at least listens. We talked about that, okay? Number seven, which I think is important, work together to try to find a solution, even though, even when you're right. Now, a lot of people say, um, don't go to don't go to bed, you know, mad and all that kind of stuff. Sometimes you're not gonna resolve the issue that night, that day, that moment. Sometimes you have to walk away. Sometimes you have to cool off. Sometimes you 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 won't meet have meet in the middle. Because both of you guys are on tens. And it just becomes this this battleground, this pull pulling, you pulling, he pulling, you getting upset. So that's when you start dragging in old stuff because you don't have nothing else to argue about. So you start bringing in stuff that you guys had resolved a week ago, two weeks ago, two, a month ago. And then you're like, oh, you brought that up? Then you bringing up something. And it just becomes this free fall and you don't even understand what the initial fight was about because you didn't brought up all this old stuff that you guys had settled. So sometimes before you have to go below the belt, before you run out of things to argue about with the current thing, you start bringing other things, I say, walk away. I say, you know what? It seems like we're not going to see eye to eye. We're not going to resolve this. I'm not saying act like it don't exist, but say I'm, I, I can't talk about it anymore because we cannot come to the meaning of the mind. So we're going to agree to disagree and we're going to move on until we can find a resolution for this. And I always say you should find a resolution and it doesn't have to be right then and there unless it's something like life-threatening. Because a lot of times when we begin to hit below the belt, it's because we have drug other things into that current um, situation, that current argument. I hope I'm making sense, right? And number eight, try 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 to look at it and put a period behind every disagreement and i know you're saying well gail you just said i didn't say you have to do it that night but always try to go back and resolve the issue because so many of us are walking around with unresolved issue unforgiveness um you know just uh, a hardened heart towards our spouse and that is not the will of god right and i am a strong believer if you can put a period behind it and not keep putting commas when it comes to what is going on in your marriage you can get past anything it's when you don't resolve the issue and you have not learned effective listening skills and we as women we talk more than men anyway but we need to learn effective listening skills and i'm working on that every single day i have not arrived with that right but we need to learn to listen because they are speaking to us right and a lot of times we, we get frustrated like he ain't listening no way so i'm just gonna talk do you hear what i'm saying do you hear what i'm saying and then you start saying stuff oh stupid that's why you know that's why i'm gonna be leaving you next weekend you know we get to saying those things 
because we think that's going to jar them and make them listen. It's not. It's a reason why he has stopped listening. And it's because you have done too much talking. And I know for a fact that we know all the buttons to push in our marriages to send our husbands over the edge. And he knows all the buttons to push to send you over the edge. The goal here is to learn to communicate more effectively, learn to listen more than we speak, and think about what techniques gonna work for me, not for me to be to hit below the belt. Because let me just tell you, Saying I'm sorry on a continuous basis, it gets old, it gets tired, and it gets where they don't even accept it as it's really being true, right? And if you're dealing with a spouse, right, that it's the reverse, I always say you have control over you. You can never control the other person, but you can control how you respond, how you react what you say out of your mouth. You do have control over that. And I want to give a shout out to my girl, Lisa Dub Washington. She wrote a book called The Power of Shut Up. So if you haven't got the book, go to her, her page here on um, Facebook, Lisa Dub Washington. She'll put the link to Amazon in, in the chat. And I, I say that because uh, what about four years ago, maybe even longer, I had a conversation with Lisa and she was really, you know, just running her mouth. And I told her to shut up, just shut up. She didn't take that very good. She didn't like that very much, but I will tell you, she made a turn in her marriage because what she was, all the things she was talking about, I had literally ruined my marriage with my mouth. And I always said, if I ever got in a position to help women not ruin their marriage and not have to go rebuild and restore and repair and say, I'm sorry, all of those things, I was going to do it. And I told her, I said, you have to learn to shut up and allow your husband to speak. And this, about two weeks ago, she released her book called The Power of Shut Up because those words, even though they offended her, literally changed her marriage. And so you guys, uh, again, I'm going to go look at the, the chat. Just know that I always, always go and answer your questions. I will always like just to acknowledge that you was on here. I appreciate you so much for joining Wife Chat. I thank the young lady in Wisconsin for being open and honest and allowing me to tell her you can have a voice in your marriage. You can literally have a voice in your marriage, but you don't have to hit below the belt. You don't have to be a punching bag, but you have to have some tools and strategies to really help you get past some of these things, right? And and hopefully the, the, the tools and strategies that I gave you guys today will work. Just know that the techniques that I use is counting to 10, Asking myself those three questions. Gail, do you have to say what you're about to say to Gil right now? Is what you're about to say to Gil, would you want them words put back, you know, said back to you? Because you know they ain't going to be good. They're going to be nasty. And the third thing is, is what you're about to say to Gil, are you going to have to apologize for? And I will tell you, when I go through that process, counting to 10 and asking myself those three questions, most of the time I change my delivery. I'm just saying most of the time. I'm batting about 80%. I didn't moved up. I'm not perfect, right? Because sometimes I overrule all of those techniques and I let them have it because I'm human, right? And you guys know I'm not perfect, so I don't ever uh, say that I'm on here perfect, but I'm doing a lot better. And, 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 I, and I consider it a privilege and an honor to sit before you guys and say I'm about 80% because I used to be like 0%. So anyway, um, let me put on these readers. Y'all know I need these readers to be able to read y'all stuff, right? 
Um, thank you guys so much for hopping on here. Um, thank you guys so much. I want to die. You want to die? Why you want to die? Laugh out loud. That's a great chat tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I appreciate you. I appreciate you guys right back for supporting this. Lisa, thank you so much. I hope you put your um um I put, hope you put your the you, the name of your book Power of Shut Up. Sometimes revol resolving it later allows you to cool down. Thank you, Nikki. You are really right about that cuz you, you're right because when you're in the heat of the mo moment, you 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 just say some stuff that you will regret, right? You really will regret it, right? Thank you guys. Good evening, everybody. Um, hi, Monique. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you guys so much for getting on here. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. Again, um, I'm wrapping up my wife masterclass. If you guys have not joined the, the 160 Wife Club here on Facebook, you have done yourself a disservice. It is all wives that are in there and we're all working on intimacy, love and sex. Um, I've been holding wife masterclass in there. Last week we had the amazing Sonya J. Wells. She talked about the spirit filled wife. Uh, the week before then, I had the amazing Kiki Ramsey. She talked about the purpose-filled wife. And this Thursday at 8.30 Eastern Standard Time in my group, you, if you're not part of the group, you won't be able to get, you know, hear this. I'm going to be talking about the pleasure-filled wife, really how to please and get what you want out of the bedroom. So that's going to be a hot masterclass. So I'll be wrapping that up. Uh, I love you guys to pieces. If you have anything you want me to chat about, I mean, absolutely any anything. I would just say where the state the, that you came from, I will never mention your, your name. Hit me up in my, my chat um, box saying, Gail, I want to talk about this. Either put it in the line. And again, I love you guys to pieces. Thank you so much for allowing me to pour into you guys. And after having my first guest in wife chat on Tuesday, right, I am going to welcome some more guests into, um, um, you know, wife chat. I'm going to have the amazing Deborah Owens. She's going to talk about um, us being financially sound. I, I just have some amazing things that's going to be lined up. And again, if you have not registered for the Ultimate Wise Summit, what in the world are you waiting for, right? It is going down July the 27th in Washington, D.C. It's going to be the biggest wives gathering ever. And so go to thewivesummit.com. Again, I love you guys to pieces. Have an amazing, amazing night. I will see you Thursday in the group for a wife, uh, for a wife masterclass. And if not, I will see you on Tuesday for wife chat. Have a great day.